Hey, welcome to Deconversion Therapy. I know you haven't heard from us in a little bit, but I wanted to go ahead and stick in our first ever Halloween show, which goes back to 2019. That's crazy. And it's when we first covered Jesus Ween. Yes, Jesus Ween is a real thing. So I hope you'll listen and find us on all the social media places and check out our merch. We have some really fun new stuff and some of the things that Bonnie herself designed. So you'll see everything in the description of this episode. And you can find everything else at deconversiontherapypodcast.com. All right, let's hear Jesus Wayne. Welcome to a haunted night of deconversion therapy. We're scary. This is Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> or scared. It's Karen. And please find us anywhere you're looking on Instagram, on Facebook under deconversion therapy, on Twitter. You can see us all those places. And if you wouldn't mind, please also subscribe and rate us, review us. We really appreciate it. That really helps us in the long run. And yeah. it keeps demons away. Apparently, it's not enough just to listen anymore nope. to something. <laughs> You've got to create your own Nielsen ratings bullshit. <laughs> You know who we should have is our listeners. It's whoever are the people who take their time and write reviews about everything. Mm -hmm. I can't believe when I look up something that I've never heard of and there's like a thousand reviews already, mm -hmm. people with paragraphs. I'm like, who are these people? Where, where do we find them? Those people live in your house telling me that a watch <laughs> is sitting on a soft pillow. That was one <laughs> review my husband had to fake. <laughs> it was gold. Ah, anyway, this yes, is our so Halloween <laughs> special edition, just like there's Halloween specials, this is going to be ours because, I mean, what holiday is better for us? Well, well Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Easter. Um. <laughs> Except for those, what's a better holiday for us to do our podcast on than Halloween? I don't know. This is the first year I've ever been aware that some churches don't like you to celebrate Halloween. So this is you've known know. longer than I have, right? I know. I yeah. I'm envious that you have had the privilege to live in this <laughs> almost pristine like view of it because it is so it it's embarrassing. What the churches have done, <laughs> it's incredible, and it takes so much damn money to do half the stuff they do just to say, we don't do Halloween. So a lot of these churches, they have varying levels of it being a big deal, you know, or not being a big deal to celebrate it, to downright condemnation. Mm -hmm. And um, I just... All I can figure is it's another way of making people who don't believe like you do, the mm -hmm. others, and and finding a way of finding uh, camaraderie and bonding over being, you know, like trapped in a bunker <laughs> waiting for the world to end. Like, it's, it's us against right. the world mentality. Um, there is a whole website devoted to um, Halloween paraphernalia. <laughs> that is Jesus themed. So scroll oh, yeah. down to the next to the last page of our of our notes that we're looking at. I bet there. I mean, it's huge marketing. Yeah. Well, look at this. Okay. So there's there's the picture of the little kid with smiling with all of his teeth. <laughs> oh, aren't isn't he lucky to have all his teeth? Damn I know. Christians. <laughs> it says so the bag that he's trick or treating with or whatever he's doing. 
um, says, shine with the light of Jesus. And it's got a whole bunch of pumpkins on there. They're all smiling. One of them has a cross carved, carved in into it. it. Yep. And the back. And look at that. Look at that shit pile of candy he's got. Mm-hmm. I know. Though. And it's just it's Smarties all, and some pencils. It's all Smarties and, um, and Tootsie Rolls. And pixie sticks, it's all of the low level That's right. candy. So they couldn't even invest in good candy for the photo. Yeah. The, for their marketing. And the kid, do you notice, is not dressed up. As in uh-huh. they're not <laughs> going to upset anybody by putting him in an outfit that people are like, What? Nope, he's just ready for the fall festival. <laughs> oh gosh. Other things that they have, and look at that, and we'll post all of these pictures. There is a pin the cross on the pumpkin game. <laughs> like, what pumpkin has a cross to start with? At least the donkey has a tail. But, okay, so if it's pin the cross on the pumpkin, where does the cross yeah. go? If everyone wins. Oh, my Does God. it matter? Yeah. All right. But speaking of everyone winning, when I was a kid, there was one party that I went to and they put a blindfold on me for pin the tail on the donkey and I got it right in the center and everybody was amazed, but I could see through it and I lied. See, now we're talking about real evil in the world. I know. Not just. Yep. Yep. And you probably won something good and you probably walked through the sea of people high-fiving, <laughs> looking to your left and your right, your bangs all sprayed with Aquanet. You just felt so good No, I was yourself. really, really young. This is when I was learning not to lie and not to... <laughs> oh, my, my other big lie was uh, somebody, some neighbor kid had told me to write fuck you on the wall. Oh, right. And so in chalk, you know, it comes right off. But, um, but I did it. Then, of course, the people came over to the door, and they're like, did she write this on the wall? And I said no, and my mom believed me and defended me. So they closed the door, and I just burst out crying. She's like, why are you crying? I'm like, I wrote it on the wall. I don't know what it means. (laughs) That's my past. So you're saying those are the only two things you did. That would have been your Christian testimony on youth night. (laughs) They're like, uh, Bonnie, do you want... Oh, no, pass. Um, uh, pass. Let's find this. Where's the guy that inhaled? Is he here? Is he here? <laughs> okay, so number three thing that is Jesus-themed for Halloween, they've got lollipops um, in these little square plastic wrappers that say, walk in the light of Jesus. I mean, I don't know. if you're going that far, it's just... It's exhausting. Yep. Why are you participating? It's again the okay, let's hijack something that right. Yeah, and just just make a mess of it. So thank goodness when you and I were growing up, there was not any of that where there alternative. were alternatives. No, there weren't alternatives. There wasn't really even the movement of it's really evil. Although I do remember that it was like we avoided anything super scary. None of us were like, I'm going to be Dracula. Yeah. No, no. It was always TV characters. All right. So those are the marketing things that are disgusting. For churches. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when we were young, we got to dress up as anything we wanted and be all cute. And I think there were even like little church gatherings where, you know, you can bob for apples and stuff like that. But there wasn't any fall festival bullshit. And so let's talk. There weren't replacements. No. Always. Uh, when we went trick-or-treating, it was always windy. I seem to remember more than one year having an ear infection <laughs> and and it really hurting. Um, my grandparents handed out nickels rolled in foil. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and then I was in the bank the other day and this lady says, can I have two rolls of pennies, please? I give these out for Halloween. I'm like, what? Pennies? It's this many years later. And my grandparents were giving out nickels. They were rolling. So, I know. I can imagine the kids are like, 
pennies. They were ballers. <laughs> Admit Baller. it. Um, well, you and I, okay, let's talk about the things we dressed up in. So we went trick-or-treating together since we were very little. And we have some pictures we're going to put up in our Facebook group, um, maybe on Instagram later, but probably in the Facebook group. And there's a picture here of me. Can you read what you were? Do you remember what you were? I think I was Miss America. It is. That's what the sash says. And so what I want to discuss is... Back in that day, they you had a plastic mask that did not fit the contours of your face, <laughs> but still made you sweat somehow underneath. That's right. But I love because breath. I love that it's Miss America, but they're like, ah, but your face isn't gonna do it. We're just gonna give you. We're gonna give you a blonde person. And this is mm-hmm. what Miss America means to everyone. So just cram your little, you know, disgusting mug in and, there, kid. And I could not wait until the week after Halloween when I could come to your house and wear it oh. because I was not allowed to have plastic masks like that. <laughs> because I'm it was pretty sure. probably unsanitary. Um, you can No, and there was some... <laughs> <laughs> there was some uh there was some huge value put on making your costume yourself. Oh yeah, my parents said that that was not a value for them. Well, we'll get to later years with you. Yes. Do you know what I was? I said, Can you tell from this picture? You looked like Holly Hobby cuz you have sort of no. that ragamuffin pants. But no. it's hard to see. That's a skirt. Oh, it's a skirt <laughs> and you've got yep. puffy sleeves. And then I'm a gypsy. Yeah. I was a gypsy several years <laughs> <laughs> because I had the outfit already. Right. And we could just mix and match. And then all it took was a little bit of extra Revlon cherries in the snow lipstick to make me look, you know, authentica colored. Yeah. Well, the whenever I didn't have a costume, it was always, you know, thrown together last minute and it was the old hobo. Get a string. There, yeah, get a stick. Tie there it. was one that I didn't put in the notes here that you know, you were a hillbilly. Oh. And you had like straw ponytail oh, that's pigtails. right. And like blacked yep. out a tooth. That's and, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and for whatever reason, a giant fake lollipop. Oh, well, I'm sure that was, again, a last-minute thing, which is great because, you know, right? my cousins actually are Appalachian Americans, so it would have been great for my mom to be, like, <laughs> asked by her sister, what's Karen going to be? What's Karen going to be? One of well, your children. Um, and that year, I was Wonder Woman. Oh. Um, Oh, Which, good. of course, my mom made the whole costume, including the wristband thing. See? That's yeah. good stuff. People, I think, yeah. are getting back to the homemade ones because they're getting, like, they're getting more creative. But, and Pinterest. Yeah, we, we were just, hey, what do you not wear that often? <laughs> what can we put together? So, my favorite. So, look at this next one. This is my favorite because what this is, is you and I are getting to the age where we want to look cute. And my <laughs> idea of looking cute is getting a dress-up outfit that I think would look good if my parents would let me go to a bar alone. <laughs> At nine years old. Alone. I would think this would have really worked. And I can't tell if I'm holding a clutch purse <laughs> or my hands. Your just my... shoes were about five inches high, and that's not an exaggeration. Those shoes were magic. They were like kiss yes. shoes, except yep. they were like this pink and purple plaid, and we found them at some... You know, I don't know if it was some secondhand store. And then I'm just wearing a pink skirt and a flowy top. And my hair is like a box of ramen noodles. That means I've really tried to brush it out there. 
It, and you know what though? You look like when you zoom in on it and look at your face, you look like you had just gotten engaged to a guy who was going to be a pastor. Aww. You look so like pure. And it also looks like maybe you just recently had gotten your braces off. I'm not sure. Good. And who now, was I? <laughs> Pinky. Did you know, do you, do you remember oh, yes, this? Yes, I do that you called yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I did not look Pinky at all. Pinky Tuscadero. That's right. Pinky Tuscadero, who is the cool girl who came, was she like Fonzie's girlfriend? She was on, Fonzie's girlfriend. On Happy Days. And, yep. So scroll down. I put a picture of her there. The, you did not look like it's this. a little bit of a mismatch. I <laughs> she had shorts on that went up her hoo-ha. <laughs> Pink go-go boots and, like, a button-down shirt tied under her boots. And a 40-year-old face. <laughs> so She was not 40. But, <laughs> not. but you had the red hair, so it was always like, oh, me and Pinky Tuscadero. I know. That's all That's all I got back then was the only all it took. redhead that, you know, everyone else was like, ooh, redheads. And then here came Pinky Tuscadero, and I'm like, well. That's you ever said ooh, my redheads? Oh, all the time. All the time. What? Yes. All the way through college till, thank goodness, Julia Roberts, and then everyone's like, I love your red hair. But before that, it was not a good situation. That's I crazy. I never time. do that. Well, in the picture of us, I look like a mother of the bride who's had too many cocktails <laughs> and they're on like her daughter's destination wedding to Hawaii. <laughs> um, if you zoom in and look at my face, it's like, hey. <laughs> It's interesting there, but you're in yeah. a Hawaiian dress and you've got the plastic lays. One around yeah. you was not enough. It looks like yep. you each ankle, each wrist. Yeah, you've triple done them on each ankle, each wrist. You've got a flower behind yep. your hair. A flower looks and one in my decolletage. <laughs> <laughs> My flat all the time. <laughs> and I'm sure, again, we were running around like, oh, no, I don't have a bucket. We never had buckets. <laughs> and, like, my mom was like, oh, Karen. I was, like, going through stuff till we found them. Because you couldn't just find buckets everywhere. You had to really. I feel like I had that same brown bucket <laughs> until maybe I had to get rid of it for college. Yeah. But, I mean, our church, like we said, never had anything where it was, um, you guys can't do Halloween or that you had to, like, keep it quiet or anything. So that was... Yeah, fun. there was no alternative to Halloween. No, exactly. So... Speaking of which, alternatives to Halloween. Well, let me read. Um, we've got two little write-ins here. So let me read one. Okay. This one is from an Instagram follower who wrote this to us. It says, hello, I was lucky enough to grow up during the satanic panic in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> I had five siblings, and our Halloween was always spent going to our church's harvest party. <sighs> Oh. <laughs> Obviously, Halloween was Satan's Christmas, and thanks to the teaching of Bill Gothard and every ever-loving traveling preacher to come through town, we were not going to participate. Trick-or-treating was what the unsaved families did, and our parents <laughs> loved us too much to expose us once a year to reckless drivers, hidden razor blades, and demonic spirits. Sure, we didn't come home with lots of candy, but we did know what we were missing out on. One particularly repressed year, we were getting ready to pile into the family van to head to the church auditorium so we could bob for apples with our senior <laughs> pastor as he walked around dressed like a scarecrow. We, oh. we all waited on the couch while our parents showered and got the younger kids ready. My brother, ever the genius, looked around and realizing he had not just a farmer 
costume on, but was also holding an empty pail while my parents were in the back. He said nothing and ran out the door, running (laughs) from house to house quietly (laughs) and holding out his pail. He made it to four houses before my parents came out of the back and realized he was missing. (laughs) There's just a blank little area on the couch. (laughs) He snuck back in the door with a candy wrapper in his hand and the jig was up. He may have gotten grounded for a week, but the best punishment was that he had to share the candy he got with the rest of us. Uh, Strangely, (laughs) it's the only rule I ever remember him breaking as a kid. And to this day, he has no regrets. And then she wrote later, please add that due to cost restraints and the fact that our homeschool group loved historical theater, our costume uh, (laughs) every year rotated between pillars. Pilgrims, Dickens orphans, and farmers. The prairie settler kind, of course. I still haven't figured out why 80s evangelicals had such an obsessive compulsion with prairie settlers. And I responded to her, because we could wear that shit to school, too. Right, right. I had that (laughs) prairie thing. Yeah, the whole prairie thing was a... was just wearing to school and wearing to church also. I know, worked right in there. Uh, Isn't it funny how there's a tipping point between, like, if you and I had been born 10 years later, we were clearly on the path to probably not getting to go trick-or-treating. Yeah, exactly. For for, for religious reasons. Right, right. Yeah. And if we were born in a different town during the time we were trick or treating when we were young, the scare was all because the seventies, eighties, I mean, that was serial killer heaven. Like that was the time when all of them were out and about and all the scary things that really happened were happening. Even the serial killers know we've got it good right now. We've got to take advantage of this ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. And we were, um, right at the age and at the exact locale of Adam Walsh back in the day. So that was a real like wake up call and scared everyone to death. Although we didn't go alone. No. Our parents always went with us. So it wasn't like we were out there like that (laughs) <laughs> little farmer with the pail. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So my favorite thing that you were like, Hey, look into this. And I had seen it too. Um, but it is no more, but it is called Jesus Ween. <laughs> and it's a bad, bad way to combine Jesus with the last part of Halloween because In the event you didn't know, I'm talking to the dear listeners, ween is sometimes what people call a weener, a penis. I love, I mean, all they need to call it was Jesus peen and to make it (laughs) even more so. But Jesus ween is insane. I thought it was a joke. I know. I know, but it wasn't. And Jimmy Kimmel picked up on it and talked about it. Um, They, uh, so I read, I read something on it and I watched a couple of newscasts. So it started in Canada, in Alberta. Um, and the newscasters are interviewing people and it says, they would like you to talk to your friends and pastors about Jesus ween. (laughs) So the, the idea was instead of a costume to wear white as a sign of purity, um, hand out Bibles and, and tracts and stuff like that. Um, it was founded by a guy from Calgary, Paul Aid, A D E. I don't know if it's odd, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, but Canada, I thought Canadians were like so much cooler. So, so when I went and looked at all of the old articles on there, I click his Twitter page. By the way, Jesus Ween's Twitter page has 58 followers. <laughs> That's hilarious. This is back in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I traced the guy, not only was he a pastor, but he's a realtor. Well, <laughs> which which is kind of concerning. Yeah. I guess he wasn't worried about 
Uh, you know. Yes, he didn't care about his reputation. Uh, he wanted everyone to look like a cult. I guess oh, so. Why? Um, oh, God. And I would, I would love to know if he knew that the word ween, what it meant. <sighs> Um, but it, it clearly didn't catch on. Thank God. <laughs> like, I like to think I like to think that he's still trying to come up with something, and he's like, "Oh, Jesus, eggplant emoji!" <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no one will ever gosh. know. Can you so imagine how, just like, oh yeah, huh. you know, Paul, eh? Down the road. I would love, I would love, love, love if some fair listener out there ever had to celebrate Jesus Ween. And I feel like they might be listening. Yeah, because it would have gone in the circles where parents caught wind of that shiz and was like, I would love to hear from a Jesus Weener. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So, so I guess then the question comes to me, like, how dangerous is it for Christians to actually celebrate this holiday? And then I start thinking, okay, how many people who are not saved get saved on Christmas by giving a Christmas gift? None. So I really don't think there's a big threat. I don't. Do you? I do not either. So that's uh, a few episodes ago, I went ballistic reading some woman's thing about how we did this thing in the neighborhood that was just happening, probably just as we're recording tonight, um, called a witch's ride, and it all goes to charity. Mm, That's right. And Mm -hmm. um, they collect money and, and all this stuff. But... This one woman wrote to the whole neighborhood, people, witches are real, and Satan's out there, and da-da-da, and join me in praying against this, and people think it's harmless, and blah, blah, blah. So there's definitely this huge belief and fear of that day and Halloween and the spirits, but you just want to write back like, how little faith do you have that you worship the biggest God? Yeah. Like, right. you know, I don't. But for Christians who do, like, is it, he really that fragile that he just gets mowed over one night a year <laughs> and it's powerless <laughs> that people will just be possessed? A few days ago, this started going around. There is an extreme haunted house tour in in Tennessee, and it requires a 40-page waiver and a doctor's okay. Have you heard of this? I've heard of lesser versions of that where people, you know, have to say that they're in good health, so they, you know, are not likely to have a heart attack. I guess that's similar to this one, but this one goes to the extreme. It's a haunted tour experience that spans two states and lasts up to 10 hours. Oh, my God. I know. It's called the McCamey Manor Experience, and it goes for, from Summertown, Tennessee, to Huntsville, Alabama, <laughs> and it requires the contestants... Um, to be 21 or over, pass a drug test, be insured. Pass a drug test like that you're on something? (laughs) You would hope, but opposite. The owner offers $20,000 to anyone who completes the tour, but says that no one ever has. What do they do? You waterboard you? Pretty much. By the way, I figured out the trick to waterboarding. If they put something over you, you, like, poke your tongue out a little bit and then breathe out of the side of your lip. Okay. That's going to come in handy. So here we go about this scary one. Uh, Some guy said he was thinking, like, okay, how how bad can it be? Like, I can do go to scary things. And then he read the materials, and he said, I read it, and then I quit. I got to the last page and turned around and went home. There's so much. You have to pull out your own teeth. There's a chance. What? Uh, <laughs> your nightmare. <laughs> There's a chance of you getting a tattoo or your fingernails getting pulled out. It's overwhelming. Oh, my God. There's a chance of death. 
So that's not fake scary. That, that's just being shitty to people. That is we need to close and having them sign off on it down immediately. So I mean that oh, has nothing God. to do with Satan. That's exactly just a guy doing worse than Satan's been able to pull off. <laughs> I'm just going to do shitty things to people, get them to sign a waiver. I will be doing that, and I'll report back. We got a, another letter from someone named Lori. So on Instagram, on our stories, I posted, hey, you have six hours if you want to get something in before oh. um, we record. So we got this from Lori. She writes, in the late 1990s, when I was 11, my mom's youngest brother, who was a youth pastor, married a girl from his youth group. She said, Mm. just for the record, now that I'm in my (laughs) 30s, I do not support that this happened. Um, So this girl was 19 years old, suddenly married to a 30-something youth pastor. That is just that's the story. That's a gap. That's a gap. Uh, she took on the heavy workload of full-time ministry, teaching part-time and working in the church office bleh, while also being partly responsible for the teenagers in her, yes, the, in her husband's youth group who were barely younger than her. Yeah, I was like, who are two years younger. Exactly. You know, as the crow flies in school grades, but not chronologically. Yeah. You could tell she hated it, especially working with teenagers. But one thing she loved was performing. She enjoyed giving over-the-top solos during praise and worship that showcased her wide vocal range and acting in dramas. I'm picturing her doing the thing where she holds one ear closed. Remember <laughs> when? <laughs> right, right. Uh, and her absolute <laughs> favorite thing to do was play Satan. She started hmm. playing Satan in the drama productions for our church's Halloween event, which was called Hallelujah Night, by the way. <laughs> the first few years. That's better than Jesus Wayne. <laughs> the first few years, we'd go out and perform street drama and hand out candy and tracks <laughs> to combat the evil lurking the streets of our small town on Halloween night. Uh, That's on your resume, though, street drama. (laughs) A few years in, we started hosting the event at our church instead. I like the way it's like, ah, you just come to us. Right. (laughs) My aunt took this role very seriously. She'd dress in all black, tease her hair, apply a full face of scary devil makeup, and carry a massive wooden pitchfork. She'd stride around twirling her cape and pointing the pitchfork at the congregation, then slamming the end of the pitchfork onto the stage over and over. I have no idea why the entire congregation wasn't rolling on the floor laughing at this spectacle, but there was something genuinely terrifying about it, especially Mm -hmm. when you combined it with one of Carmen's greatest hits and the very real belief that we all could go to hell. Now, we have not introduced Carmen to you yet, Barani, but... You just wait. It's a very Eric Carmen. <laughs> it's no. a the it's a guy who's very theatrical and did like this inspirational music and then he'd talk over it. It oh. yeah, we'll get to him. I think we should do an episode <laughs> on him. <laughs> We'll get to you. So she wrote, I got chills when she pointed that damn pitchfork at me. This became a recurring and anticipated role of hers, not just on Halloween, but also on Easter Sunday. When she played (laughs) Satan in a hellfire and brimstone skit set to a Dennis Jernigan song called Separation that was about being condemned to hell after a lifetime of good works. She also renewed her role for church camp every year. You could always hear at least one kid screaming in terror when she came out. Just imagine sending your little one to summer camp for a fun, wholesome time, only for them to be scared silly by Satan, who looks similar to a Motley Crue band person. (laughs) It would probably make a psychologist, nope, 
It would probably take a psychologist to get to the bottom of why my aunt enjoyed playing Satan so much. Hmm. Maybe it was her way of taking some of her power back as a woman who married into a fundy Pentecostal church immediately after childhood. Maybe she just really liked acting. But the funniest part to me, now that I've deconverted, is how this pastor's wife, this person who is tasked with the responsibility of showing Jesus' love and compassion to a congregation and their kids, preferred to play the bad guy. And (laughs) loved nothing more than reminding us all that we might burn in everlasting torment if we stepped out of line. Yeah, exactly. Those were the good parts. They were the juicy ones. Everyone knows, you know, everyone wanted to play Rizzo. Yeah, that's right. In Greece. Greece. That's it. Yeah. And yeah, Satan, of course, would always get all the attention, I'm sure. And you know, she probably also wanted to wear a bit of slutty makeup. <laughs> well, that's just me well, making her a slut. That red I wonder lipstick if they're still married. that you wore when you were four. <laughs> she could wear cherries in the snow Uh was my grandmother's color (laughs) it seems like the fear of the occult and satan and all that at halloween grew more and more rather than always existing like it just Yeah. yeah it became whatever was being talked about at church and whatever was being thrust upon everyone it's all of a sudden Now, Satan has more power to be scary and to be out there because everyone is talking about it and being aware of it. When before, it was pretty all right. Like before Christianity, there has always been, man has always sought out a way for people to get their comeuppance. They always want bad people to be punished and good people to get rewarded. So, With mythology, it was the same thing. And Buddhism, it doesn't matter what religion. It doesn't matter if those religions are gone now. It's all the same, you know. They always want some eternal punishment and reward. And so as it became, I wouldn't want to say trendier, but it did become really trendy in the 80s, Satan. (laughs) Yeah, the satanic panic thing that she was talking about. There were these fiction books written about Satan, and there were these um, films being made about, you know, uh, Armageddon and all that. And so, (laughs) with the advent of the printing press and the cheapness of film, yes. Thing were distributed. There you go. Then all the fear mongering can get spread too. And then that means, yeah, yeah Halloween is all like, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Okay. So if anything fun or unexpected happens in your neighborhoods uh, regarding Halloween this year, let us know. We would love to see anybody's costumes. We would really love to see any dog costumes. Or that's just me. Um, did you just say meth? Meth. No. Meth? <laughs> no. Did, did, you just, did you just object to dogs wearing costumes? I agree. That's the, all I want to see. That's all I want to see. <laughs> yep. But do, if you like, tag us in your Instagram photos so we can see your costumes. And if any crazy shit goes down or you get given a chick crap, A chick crack. Woo. That's another. Yeah, that's a treat. (laughs) If you get a chick track given to you or there are people out witnessing about the evils on Halloween, please let us know. Write in to us and we'll read that on air because we love that stuff. Yeah. Or if this has sparked any of your memories of Halloween's past, write it in. We'll post pictures of us trick-or-treating so you can make fun of us yeah and all of those little um doodads that you can buy we'll put those pictures up too for sure we'll put it all up but see you for shizzle (laughs) next week (laughs) and i hope that you don't dress as a shit pile all right don't cheat when you play pin across on the pumpkin god all they need to do is play pin the Jesus on the cross. 
false. And it's seen. there, though. It's handy to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, why? That's it. horrible. <laughs>